Okay, I'm just gonna see if this shock moves also like the other one. That was so weird. I hear the noise from both sides. Now if I turn it right here, I'll try to. Okay, so I've had some advice from a few people. Uh, Ben's World and Vito. He has a YouTube channel. I'll put a link to his channel below on description. So, um, you know, I came up with a idea of uh, um, spraying these joints with... Uh, with some silicon spray. Um, first, I'm thinking of doing uh, the struts here. I don't know how you lubricate that, other than maybe down inside there on both sides and see if the noise goes away. On um, Ben's World, Rob, Robin. Uh, uh, he thinks it's the upper strut mount, one or two of them. All right, so I'll speed things up a little bit. Uh, so I decided to spray some silicon at the top of the shock. See if that made the noise go away. I just sprayed it around just on both sides. And then I go inside the car, move the wheel. Noise is still there. All right, then I uh, crawled under the car and uh, started spraying uh, some silicone on the on the joints. Um, I did uh, look at the steering shaft. It's way up there above the steering box, and it's so strange. It's like made out of plastic. <laughs> At least where it goes into the, I don't know if it's metal that's got plastic around it and something. I don't know. It was kind of bizarre looking right there. See that white part right there? You know, that's plastic. What is that? It's got to have metal around it. I wonder why. Maybe it's something to do with safety when it collapses or you get in an accident or something like that. But, um, yeah. So I just kept... Uh, rooting around under there looking for stuff feeling things um i did uh wiggle the uh drag link and it moves you know uh they're supposed to move a little bit you know because they uh you know they turn with the steering wheel in different directions and so after uh being under there and spraying all the joints, the ball joints, all that with the silicon. I went in, started turning the wheel, and I said, oh, wow, it sounds a little better. And it just came right back. The noise just came right back. So um, I decided uh, my next step was going to be... Uh, Replacing the, uh, or uh, r removing the steering dampener and see if the noise goes away. You know, I only uh, unloosen one end of it. And um, we'll see how that goes. Here I am <laughs> loosening just that one side. Uh, of the steering dampener, I believe it's, I think it's 17s, two wrenches, pretty easy. So, um, yeah, I just uh, loosen that and then leave the other, the other end on just to test it, you know. It's probably one of the easiest things to do on this steering assembly. And once I had it loose, kind of just dangling there, then I had my uh, 
sun um, go inside and start turning the wheel back and forth. And guess what? The noise was still there. It was still there. So, on to the next fun, fun part, I guess. Here I am turning the uh, passenger side. Uh, and it, it was getting better. And I thought I found the problem by spraying a, a silicon over everything here and up on the shock some more. And then uh, I didn't hear any noise, right, you know, when I was doing it like that. But once I got inside the car, made the wheel go back and forth, the noise was still there. All right, I think I found it. I think I found it. Oh my gosh. I don't hear anything. I'll show you what I found. Oh, that was an easy... It's gonna re require a little bit of work. I loosened the strut mount. Um, bolt. So, let's see if I can find a flashlight or something. Uh, here's one. So, you can see there's a crack in the strut mount. Now, apparently, after looking at a, a bunch of YouTube videos and um, Ben's World um, guide there, uh, Robin in the UK suggested the upper strut mount. So these things, um, I believe they have a bearing on the inside. And um, those can go bad, and so you get this crunchy noise. Um, eventually, when these things go bad, if you have cracks in yours, um, there is a possibility for the top of this uh, strut mount, or the strut, if you hit a real big pothole, it could go through your hood cause extensive damage and it's dangerous <sighs> luckily on these Mercedes which I really like is you have a separate coil spring and, and shock absorber where other cars like my Kia and I think the Lincoln it's all incorporated and you got to buy a whole assembly or you got to compress a spring. But, you know, if you look, can you see that? That's a crack all the way around. So luckily these are not too expensive. We'll check them out. Um, so I think the shock absorber is still good because it's, you know, low mileage. It's not showing, you know, I sprayed a bunch of silicone down the throat here, but, um, it wasn't like, uh, showing signs of leakage where the fluid in the shock gets past the seal and then you get it all up and down. You'll see it. And you have a horrible ride, you know, when you're going over bumps and stuff. Uh, this isn't too hard of a replacement. 
it'll uh, just require a, a supporting, I think probably supporting right here with a jack because the thing will lower down. Inspect your springs, make sure they're seated right. So yeah, I had uh, disconnected the drag or the the steering damper, thinking that was it, but it's good. Someone hooked that back together. Thank God I found it. Oh, and I'm probably gonna do both sides. It's just a, you know, it, it's 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 just a wear item, especially being it's all rubber right there. And just after years, the rubber cracks. And there's nothing you can do about it but replace it. There's YouTube videos on how to do it. I am so glad I found that. I was under here last night, and I had my son. Okay, now turn the wheel. I'm tired of turning the wheel, Dad. Okay, can you just, uh, I want to go sit down watch TV. <laughs> you know, it's hard finding a, a helper that will do things for you. But yeah, that, that noise just transmits down through the entire system and it kind of fools you thinking that there's, wow, well, there's, you know, there's could be, you know, 30 other problems. And with such low miles, you know, and I didn't feel anything really loose down there, you know, and he grabbed the tie, tie, uh, tie rod ends and wiggle them around and up and down and, and the boots were all nice and, you know, they're all nice and clean like like that. So this will be the end of part two. Thank God. I was looking for a 22 uh, millimeter wrench for this. And the only thing I could find was a motorcycle tool kit wrench. <laughs> Kawasaki this is probably from the 70s. I've always held on to this. Every time I would find a tool somewhere, like at a garage sale or something, I would buy it. And so I ended up with a bunch of bizarre tools, but it always gets me through. So this is basically just a, what is this? A seven, seven, yeah, that's a seven uh, Allen. It just goes up there. You can. Um, I didn't even really have to use this. I just put. Uh, I put a twenty-two millimeter on on that breaker bar, or uh, yeah, breaker bar, and then I just have a a piece of pipe. It's a ceiling fan down rod. Fits perfectly, and I turned it and it loosened. And then I went in there and tested it. All good. Okay, so this will be uh, the end of uh, part two, uh, part three. I'm going to search for uh, for these mounts here. We'll do both sides. Let's look at the other one real quick. I tried spraying some penetrating fluid around there. It didn't, did nothing, but loosening that, that nut... This one has one little crack. Oh, I tell you. Oh, there's the wife right on cue. Yeah, this one's got a crack too. See it? Okay, so we'll do both of them. Until we meet again.